Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, a choosing beggar who goes out of her way to circumvent a shop ban. She is a crafty one. Let's jump right in. Bit of a backstory, when I was about 20 and looking for a job, I found work for a few months at a small shop where we repaired, installed, and sold computers. Computers are a passion of mine, and I like building my own, so I had some experience and I was put as an assistant to one of the guys repairing PCs. If we had a computer in for a hardware repair, he would make the repair and then pass it on to me so that I could put it back together. If we had software repairs to do, I would go through a list of tests to make to identify the problem and then mark it down and pass it to the appropriate person. And they had allowed me to bring my own PC I was building at home in so I could work on it in the lab during breaks. For context, I live in Switzerland and we speak French in my area, so I will do a quick translation from French to English. Also, when it was lunchtime, it usually worked that one guy would stay to watch the shop while the others went to lunch, and then when they got back, the guy could go eat. So, the story. I was watching the shop once during lunch, happily working on my PC since nobody was in the shop. A lady comes in and starts browsing the shelves. We have a few PCs, laptops, and screens on the shelves, so I move out of the lab and in the client area to be available in case she needs something. After about five minutes of browsing, she leaves. A couple days later, I'm watching the shop at lunch again, and she comes back. She's easily identifiable because of some huge earrings and a large pink bag she carries, by the way. This time, she sticks around for about five to six minutes and asks me some questions about a screen without actually listening to my answers. Then she leaves again. This repeats for a couple of weeks, with this lady coming in at lunch when I'm alone in the shop, sticking around for a few minutes and leaving without buying anything. At first, I thought nothing of it, so I didn't say anything to the others. Skip to a couple weeks later. She comes in, and after spending 10 minutes looking at the shelves, comes up to me and asks, I'm looking for a gaming computer for my son. What do you have? I pull out the catalog. We have only office and lower end stuff on the shelves to avoid people grabbing something and running out. And I show her the products that can be used as gaming computers. Machines with high RAM, VRAM, and good processing mainly. She immediately says, No, no, these cost too much. Don't you have anything cheaper? No, sorry, but the ones on this page are the cheapest we have that can be used for gaming. How about building one? I read on your website that you do that, too. We didn't actually have a website. The most we had are some Google reviews. I decided not to bring it up because I was not sure how to say it without accidentally treating her like an idiot. I go on to explain that we don't build PCs on commission. What we do is repair them and or put it together if you have the pieces. The latter is mostly for people who want to upgrade parts of their PC, but are afraid of doing it themselves. And here comes the problem. She points at my own PC I was building in the back through the door I had left open when I came into the client area. You were building that when I came in. I've seen you all this time. You're not just repairing that. You're making it from scratch. Yes, but that's not for sale. That one is my own personal computer that I've been building here during breaks or when there aren't clients who need help. Then that means you can build one. So build one for my son. No, I can't build you one. It's against company policy. We can repair your PC or you can buy a new one from us, but we're not authorized to build our own to sell. This went on for a while, her demanding I build one for her and me repeating like a broken record that I couldn't. At this point, I was completely in uncharted waters, as I was trained my first day on the job on how to deal with customers, but we hadn't covered clients who don't know how to take a no. All I could do was repeat my line about company policy and hope she would eventually get the hint. After a couple minutes of this, she suddenly pulls a face like she had the most amazing idea ever and tells me, well, if you can't build one in the shop, I will buy the one you're already building there in the back. I'll give you a hundred Swiss francs for it. 
That is my computer. I built it for my own use. It's not for sale. And besides, I can't use the shop to sell my own stuff. Oh, come on. Nobody needs to know and you'll get a hundred Swiss francs practically for free. Just to summarize, this lady had wasted 20 minutes of my life, 10 of browsing, and then another 10 discussing this that I'm never getting back. She's had this I'm speaking to a slow child kind of tone the entire time, and now she wants to buy this PC I've built over a month, two counting the time spent waiting for parts to arrive, just for a hundred Swiss francs. I'm not a patient person by nature, and she was really getting me to homicidal levels of anger. Madam, again, this is my PC, it's not for sale, and even if it was, just the parts inside it on their own are worth over 800 Swiss francs, never mind all the time I've put into it. She literally jerks back as if I've struck her. She has this absolutely shocked expression on her face as if what I've said does not compute. Then she starts screaming about how I'm trying to swindle her, how it's bull stuff that a computer, a child made, would cost that much, how she was going to report me to my boss for doing illegal activities in his shop. I think she meant that I was putting together my PC in the lab. I had permission for that, but at that point, I didn't bother correcting her. She continues saying how I should be grateful an actual working adult who knows how life works is willing to put up with you and other similar stuff. I was lucky that before anything else happened my boss and the other two guys working that day came back from lunch. They took one look at this lady and then the boss started yelling at her, screaming to get out of his shop and that if she ever returned he would finally call the police on her. She was out of there as if the devil itself was on her butt. Turns out, this was the third time she came and did this. Every time, she would wait for someone new who didn't know her to be alone in the shop, then come in and start demanding stuff worth thousands of Swiss francs for cheap or wanting impossible services. The first time she had done that, she had been asked to leave. The second time, they had officially banned her from ever doing business with them again and told her she was not welcome in their shop. In story two, we have a choosing beggar who wants some free internet. Don't worry, this will give you great exposure. So I work at a call center for a large telecom company in my country, and recently we've been changing our entire ADSL network for the faster fiber-based network. It is already cheap enough for the market standard here, but this lady wasn't ready to give up. For context, my service is centered around businesses and residential condos are required a CNPJ to function properly. Our local registration equivalent that legitimizes businesses. I don't know how businesses and companies work outside Brazil, so I apologize if I'm making things confusing. So we're off to the story. Big Telecom, good morning, how can I help you? Hello, I'm a condo manager and I'm looking for a fiber connection. Sure, what's your CNPJ? She informs me of her CNPJ number. So I'm off to the usual routine. Check mailing, check for any red flags, debts, check the connection availability. All okay. Thanks for waiting. Availability is confirmed. That'll be 200 megabytes of fiber connection, plus VoIP phone with unlimited calls. Price is blank. No installation fee is included. Look, I have a number of apartments. I won't pay for a service to be installed in my condo. If you send it for free, I can test the quality of your connection and advertise to the other apartments for them to buy your connection. That's not how we work. It is a contract. I can't even change its characteristics on the system. That's why Big Telecom is going bankrupt. Goodbye. Anything else I can do for you, mobile or TV plans for your choosing beggar hangs up? I turn to the co-worker beside me and tell him about the bizarre call I just received. He tells me that I missed a great opportunity. I should have asked her for an apartment at her condo for free. If it is of good enough quality and I approve it, then I'll tell my friends to buy an apartment at her condo. Telecom is full of choosing beggars, man. In our final story, a choosing beggar wants to return a four-year-old product. Most stores have a 1500-day returns policy, don't they? 
I run a small appliance store in a small town and today one of my cashiers came to me and said a customer became enraged about our 30 day return policy. The customer began shouting and screaming for help, so I approached her. Yes ma'am, how can I help you? I want to return this, but the girl was rude and said I couldn't get my money back. The receipt is from 2016, it is January 24th, 2020. Ma'am, we have a 30-day return policy. I bought this appliance for $100 and I don't use it much anymore, and I want to return it and get my money back. Here on the receipt and on our website, it shows that you have 30 days to return your item if you do not like it. Choosing Beggar becomes enraged and starts foaming at the mouth and yelling, I want to speak to your manager. Yes, ma'am. This is the owner speaking. If you want, you can sell your item online or to a friend, but we do not accept back items that are past 30 days old or broken. This is why you are going bankrupt because your customer service sucks. If I give you $100 for a broken item you used for four years, then I'd be giving away money and going bankrupt because of you. Have a good evening. Choosing Beggar walks off wailing and screaming that we are a ripoff and screaming that no one should buy small appliances from us. So this is a first. Out of all of the people who have ever come for returns, nobody has ever tried something like this. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.